Okay, now let's see applications of a hydraulic system. The first one is hydraulic brake. So in most vehicle, hydraulic system is used in the braking system as shown in the figure, okay? So uh, this is a four wheel of a car, four wheel of the car. Uh, this is the front and this is the back. You should know where is the front and where is the back, huh? front and back. Uh, inside a car, there's a pedals, a brake pedal. So when you press on this brake pedals, so you apply a, f uh, a pressures on the pistons. Inside here, okay, this hydraulic system is this uh, filled with oil, okay. So this pressure will be transmitted to the four, the brake, eh? the brake of the four wheels. Yeah, it will be transmitted to the brakes of the four wheels. For most of the vehicles, uh, the front brake is is the disc brake. There's a disc here, okay, and this is the brake shoes. So when you press on it, then this uh, this brake shoes will uh, press on the disc and uh, stop the stop the the motions of the disc, okay, and therefore stop the car. Eh? This is a disc brake, and the brake at the back is the drum brake. Front we use disc brake, and back we use drum brake. So when uh, you apply the force, okay, there's a small piston here, okay. So this piston will push the brake shoes to touch uh, the wheel eh, and stop it. Sometimes a student they may ask, okay, why the front part we use a disc brake and the back we use drum brake? Uh, that is because this brake is a very good brake. It contribute to maybe about ninety percent of the braking effect. So even a high temperature, it still can work very well. Eh? High temperature, it still can work very well because the a brake, eh, the temperature of the brake can be very high. Because uh, when you stop the car, okay, so the and the kinetic energy will turn into heat energy. Eh? So the temperature will be very high. So the disc brake can function at a very high temperature. Uh, the front part contributes to about ninety percent of the braking effect. Eh? So at the front uh, front part, we use disc brake. Okay, we use this brake uh, because this brake is a very good brake. But the problem is this brake is very expensive. It's very expensive. So if you want to use uh, front and back also use this brake, uh, it will cost you a lot. Since 90% of the braking effect come from the front part of the car, so therefore only the front parts need a good brake. Okay, the back ones, we don't need a very good brake. So therefore the back one, we use drum brake. But for a uh, racing car, then both front and back also use uh, disc brake. But for normal vehicles, only the front, uh, the front wheel we use disc brake. Uh, the back one we use uh, drum brake. So that is uh, little things that you need to know about this uh, hydraulic brake. So usually a disc brake is used in the front wheel of a car, while a drum brake is used in the, in the back wheel of a car. Okay, as I told you just now. So this, this is the questions that may be asked in your test or exam. Describe briefly the working mechanisms of the uh, hydraulic brake. Okay, now this is uh, usually come, come out in uh, essay questions. Eh? So how a hydraulic brake work. So when the brake pedal is pressed, the pistons of the master cylinder applies the pressures on the brake fluid. So you press the, bre the pedals. So the pistons will give the brake fluids a pressure. So this pressure is transmitted uniformly to each cylinder at the wheel. So it will be transmitted to each wheel equally. Eh? And uh, cause the piston at the wheels to push the brake shoes. Eh? So the piston will push the brake shoes and the brake shoes will press against the surface of the brake. So the frictions between the brakes and brake shoes causes the vehicle to slow down and stop. So this, that is how a hydraulic brake work. Another question that may be asked is, uh, why is it dangerous if air bubble is trapped in the brake fluids of a braking system? Okay, if there is a uh, air bubbles uh, trapped inside the brake fluids, okay, if the air bubbles inside, okay, this may happen uh, when you change the brake oil, or you change the brake fluids. So you change the brake fluids, uh, there may be some bubbles trapped inside the oil, and that's very dangerous. Huh? Okay, if a bubble is present in the fluid, the fluid become compressible. It become compressible, then it's not a confined fluid. Eh? And this may prevent pressure transmits through the fluid and hence causing the uh, ineffective braking effects. 
you press on the pedals, the pressure, the pressure compress the air. When the pressure compress the air, the pressure will be absorbed by the air. So no pressure will be given to the brake shoes. Uh, then the car won't stop. So if the air pop bubbles, uh, so you press the press the pedals, the pressure will compress the air. So the pressure is absorbed by the air. So the pressures won't go to the field. Okay, and then uh, the car cannot stop. Uh, that's the reason. Eh? That's the reason. And this is a famous question in exam. Eh? Okay, so make sure that you know how to answer this question. Uh, why oil but not water is used as a hydraulic fluid in hydraulic brake systems? Okay, so usually we use oil. We do not use water. Two reasons. First, uh, boiling point of oil is much higher than water. So this can prevent the hydraulic fluid from boiling when the brake is very hot. As I told you, okay. Brake can be very hot, yeah. It can be very hot because uh, all the kinetic energies of the car when you brake it, it will convert it to heat energy. Especially when you go downhill, when you move downhill, uh, you will apply the brake uh, quite often, and this can increase the temperatures of the brake until uh, it can boil. If if it's water inside, it can boil the water. Because we, we use uh, oil is because the oil has a higher boiling point compared to water. And uh, second, water may cause rusting in the part of the braking systems. Okay, water may cause rusting. Eh? So that is another reason that we do not use water. Okay, state one important characteristics of the fluid used in hydraulic system. Uh, so the fluid must be easily compressed and uh, the fluid must not contain air bubbles. Eh? So that's the requirement. Okay, what is the advantage of using a hydraulic system as the braking system in a vehicle? Okay, uh, a lot of students, uh, okay, they confuse on uh, these things. Because before this, we have learned hydraulic system, right? Hydraulic system, hydraulic lift. Uh, so uh, we learned that you give a small force, okay, you give a small force, then you can get a large force, right? because the hydraulic system act as a force multiplier. So students may think that uh, that's the reason we use hydraulic brake, but uh, that's not true. Uh, that's not true. We use hydraulic brake is not because we want to produce a large force, because you can see that the piston here is all very small. Uh. It's a small piston. It's not a large piston. Uh, only if you use a large piston here, then you can, you can produce a large force, uh, but we do not use large piston here. Uh, we use hydraulic brake be not because it can multiply the force. Eh? The reason that we use hydraulic brake is because the pressure is uh, transmitted equally to all the wheel. So hydraulic brake system is used in car because it can distribute, it can distribute the pressure uniformly to the four wheels according to Pascal's principle. And this is very important, okay? Because uh, failing to do so can cause car be deflected from the road. Eh? For example, if, if, if the force that you give to this wheel is stronger than this, then you may cause this wheel uh, stop faster or stop earlier compared to this one. If this one stop, this one still moving, then the car will be deflected. The force that apply on all the wheels must be the same, it must be equal. Yeah, that's why we use a hydraulic brake. Okay, hydraulic jack. Um, hydraulic jack seldom come out in exam. Huh? It's not very important actually. So let's see what do we have in this hydraulic jack. First we have a handle. So okay, this handle is used to jack uh, the hydraulic jack and then we have a load here. So we move these handles then we can we can push this load go up. Uh. Now how it work? Uh, how it work? First of all you can see that we have a small small piston here and a large piston here. So it means that uh, this thing act, act as a force multiplier. You give a small force then you can produce a large force here. First, uh, okay, you see, you press the handles. So you press the handles, then you push. Uh, you push the fluid. You push the fluid, this valve will open, uh, but this valve will close. Uh, you, pu you push the air, uh, this valve will close, this valve will open, so the oil will go up. The oil go up, uh, and then it will push this cylinder to go up. Okay, let's see, before this, uh, before this, okay, you see, uh, the cylinder is here. So when you push these handles, you push these handles, the oil go up, it will push the, uh, this cylinder to go up, this thing go up. Uh, if you want to move it further up, uh, you pull this handle back. 
you pull this handle back uh let's see what happens okay this will close huh? you pull this handle back the fluid will try to flow back but it will close the it will close the valve after you pull this back the pressure here will, will be lower the pressure here low it will it will suck the oil here okay to make it flows to the small cylinder here okay let's see so you see you pull it backwards so you will close this valve and open this valve and then the oil here will be a uh, pull okay or suck to the small cylinder then you repeat this process again you push the handles uh, okay you push the handles again you push the handles again then this will close this will open and it will push the a lot to go further up and then if you want here there's a release valve okay so if you want to you want the pistons to come down again so then you open this release valve the oil will flow back to the buffer tank the oil flow back to the buffer tank uh, then the large cylinder will move down slowly so that is how it work explain the working mechanisms of hydraulic uh, jack i think this one you can read it by yourself right okay this one i think should be no problems you can read it by yourself in a hydraulic jack the maximum force produced at the bigger piston is always lower than the value obtained from the calculations why for the hydraulic jack okay if through calculations through calculations that i say for example you give a 5 newton force uh, then you will produce a 50 newton force okay but so you will find that if you give 5 newton then only you get 40 newton here so it means that uh, the force that you obtain here is always lower than what you should get okay suppose you give 5 newton you can get 50 but uh, in the real case okay you give 5 newtons then you only get 40 only yeah? okay it means it's lower than the theoretical value why eh? okay uh, the reason is the efficiency of the system is always lower than 100% some of the energy uh, supplied to the system may lost to other forms of energy so it may lost as a frictions or heat or what okay other forms of energy so not 100% of the energy is transferred to the big piston 